Good morning friends. Welcome back to Panika Tutorials. In this video, I want to discuss what is a function, what are the advantages of functions and how to define a function and how to call the function in Python. All these concepts I will discuss in detail for you. So I request everyone to watch the complete video for better understanding. First, let me discuss what is a function. A function is a group of related statements that performs a specific task. Now the specific task, suppose let me take a simple example. I want to compute the sum of some n numbers. Now I have to write a code which will be useful for me to compute the sum of n numbers. Now I want to use this code for computing the sum of any n numbers. Then what I will do is that I will write the code in the function definition section and whenever I want to compute the sum of any n numbers then I will call the function with the parameters consists of those n numbers. So that is the meaning of a function which is a group of related statements that performs a specific task. Now what is the advantage? It helps to break our program into smaller and modular chunks. If you look at any big task, suppose let's take that you have to write a program for ATM. Now, if you look at ATM has several tasks. One task is verifying the pin number and then withdrawing the money. Is it clear? And then pin generation like that you have several tasks are there. So for each task we will call it as a one module. So the programmers will write the necessary statements which will be useful for a particular module and all these modules will be combined. Is it clear? So now what are the more advantages? You can use the reusability. The reusability is one of the advantages because I have written a code once for computing the sum of any n natural numbers and then I can use the code for computing any sum of n natural numbers and it will improve the readability of the code. And it is easy to debug also. I hope you have understood what is a function and what are the advantages of function. Now let me discuss various types of functions. We have two types of functions. One is the predefined functions. And another one is user defined functions. Already we have used the predefined function. Suppose let's take that I want to print something. Then I have used the predefined function called print. Okay. And similarly, if I want to take the input from the user or read the input from the user, I have used the function called input. These are the various predefined functions. Now, what is the meaning of predefined function is the Python developers have already written the necessary code to use this function. Now we are just using this function. What is the internal thing? Because whenever we are using the print function, it is displaying the output on the screen. We are not giving any instructions to display it on the screen. We are using this function as in programmers or the users. What it is internally doing or what is the definition of the print function? We don't know. We are just calling the print function. So these are the examples of the predefined functions. Now here we will mainly target about the user defined functions. What are the functions user will write in the programs? Those kind of functions we will call it as user defined functions. Now the user defined functions, if you talk about the C programming language, we will have three things. One is function declaration And you will have function definition and then you will have the function calling. These are the three steps are very important whenever you are using the user defined functions in C program. So any function if you want to define and calling you first you should declare it then you should write the function definition. The function definition will consist of the statements which are 
required for performing the specified task then you will call the function but when it comes to the python in python we does not use the function declaration session we will have only function definition and function calling so in python function declaration will not be there so any function if you want to define and you want to call further you no need to declare in python but however it is necessary in the c programming language now let me discuss about the function definition the function definition consists of a generalized syntax as def function definition def is the keyword you need to use and function name let me write it as function underscore name and then the list of parameters are the arguments okay they are optional so you will have a list of arguments or parameters and you will end with a column then the indentation will start what are the statements you want to write let's take that statement one statement two statement three statement four and then let's take that you are writing a some written statement so when it comes to the c programming long ways what we will do inside the function definition we will have the curly braces what are the statements which are there in the curly braces they will be executed whenever you are calling the particular function but in python it will follow the indentation so you have to provide the column then the indentation will start what are the statements you are writing here those statements will be executed whenever you are calling the function so it will have a def curl, def keyword and it will have the name of the function and the necessary purpose now remember one important point related to the function name the function name should always follow the rules of the variables we have discussed various rules for the variables what are they the variable name should consist of a characters or digits or underscores it does not allow any other special symbol and the variable name should start with either with a character or with a underscore it should not start with a digits and it should not allow keywords a variable name should not have the keywords and similarly white spaces are not allowed between the variables is it clear so these are the various rules you need to follow whenever you are creating a variable similarly whenever you are using the function name you need to follow these rules and one more important point the name of the function and the name of the function in the definition session and the declaration session should be same now let me write with a simple example for you and the function calling you will just use the function name and what are the parameters you want to provide here you will provide so this is the syntax for function definition and this is the syntax for function calling now let me write a simple example for better understanding i want to compute the sum of two numbers okay let me write the program and one more important point you need to define the function then only you have to call the function in python so now let me write a function called sum okay def sum and then i am taking two parameters or the two arguments okay and then column and then here what are the statements i want to do i will write i will compute some c is equal to a plus b let me write a written c okay now i need to take the two values from the user so i need to read the a value from the user so to read the any value from the user we will use a predefined function called input whatever you want to write you can write here enter a number okay now this input function will return a string 
but however I want to convert into an integer so I am doing the type casting. Similarly, I will read another number using the input function. Okay, then what I am doing? I am calling the function called sum with the values of a and b. So I am passing the values of a and b to the function called sum and then I am printing the value here. So now let me write here as it is written in so d is equal to and then print the sum is Sorry. Is it clear? Now let me discuss how this program will work. Now what will happen? First you are reading the input from the user. Okay, so let's take that user has entered the A value as 10 and B value is 5. Then you are calling this function called sum with the values as 10 comma 5. So here A value will become 10 and b value will become 5. So here the user is calling the function called sum with the values of a as 10 and b value as 5. So immediately it will go to the function definition. Then c is equal to a plus b. a value is 10 and b value is 5. 10 plus 5 will be 15. So 15 will be stored in the variable called c. That value you are returning. So return c. So the function control will come to here. So d is equal to d is equal to whatever this it is returning 15 it is returning. So d will consist of value called 15. That value you are printing as a display. So you will get the output as 15. So this is the way you can define a function and you can call the function. For better understanding I will write this program in the Jupyter notebook so that it will be very clear for you. First let me define the sum function having two parameters a and b. Then I will write a statement called c is equal to a plus b then return c. Now what I have to do I need to read the a value and b value from the user. To read the input from the user we need to use the input function. So I will write enter the a value. Similarly, I will read the B value from the user. Enter the B value. Once the user has provided the A value and B value, you can call the sum function by passing A and B value. Then you can print that one. The sum is D. Now let me run the code for you. First they are asking enter the A value. Write the value 10. B value 20. See you got the sum is 30. I hope it is clear for you. If you still have any doubts feel free to ask me in the comment section. I will try to clear your doubts as early as possible. Thank you for watching the complete video. Have a nice day.